I miss my brother's hugs. I miss, I miss his smile. I miss how, like, when he would just come into the room, the whole room would just light up. My son and him had a beautiful, beautiful bond. They would call each other best friend. And my baby lost his, you know, his best friend. The last day I saw my baby was him walking up the stairs, me walking down the stairs. And he has this thing to where he always runs up behind me and picks me up and dangles me like a little doll. Um, that was the last time I saw my baby. Later on that night, I received a bang on the door. I ran downstairs, swung my door open, and right then and there, all I could say, I knew they were detectives, is who killed my baby, who took my baby from me. I received a text message from a family member that um, Jovan died, was killed. Everything was like silent and numb to me, like you could hear like the ringing in your ear, and everything was just like mute. The detectives told us that Jovan was shot. They attempted to rob my baby. And it was someone in the car with him, Hennessy. They said that um, Hennessy was at the scene where my brother got murdered. And um, she's, she claims that she has nothing to do with it, but I don't know. I just, in my heart, I don't believe that. There's been times Hennessy referred to me as mama. She's spent the night at my house. She's eating at my table with me and my grandkids. She was there. And for her to frequent my home and out of the blue, nothing, no phone call, no, it's a bit weird. It's a bit shady. It's a bit heartless. It's a bit hurtful. Hennessy didn't even show up to my son's funeral. She has yet to knock on my door. I don't even know my baby's last words. But she's all over the internet, all on Facebook, all on live, you know, just kicking it. But then the moment that we post anything of my brother, then she want to post about him. I had Crime Stoppers on my brother's case, and then they were passing out flyers. And then she started posting about him again. And that was weird to us because we were like, this whole time you weren't, you weren't talking about him. You weren't talking about, you know. But now, because you see the flyers in your area, now you want to talk about him. A few months prior to this situation that happened with my son, my son was robbed. I just find it a bit strange that the man that stuck a gun to the, my son robbed my son. She went and got a tattoo. Hennessy went and got a tattoo of this man's name on her wrist. Hennessy, you came here today to take this lie detector test. If you fail this lie detector test, justice will be served for my son. I may not be able to bring my son back, but justice will be served. So Javon was killed this past May. What, what happened the night that you got robbed? So I was selling weed, you know, it's legal in Chicago, but I was selling weed for a little under a month, you know, and I was usually with my ex and we were into it. So I called Javon and he came and got me that day. We were chilling all day. Um, around five or six, I got a, a call from a girl. She said, hello. I said, hello. She hung up. She texted me, I saw it was Android's texting green. She was saying um, about the weed, can, can I get um, four for 100? It was really 120, I said, all right, that's cool. She said, I'm waiting for my ride. Okay, hours passed. This is around like 12 now. Um, a guy calls me, he says, my phone died. I'm like, was that your girlfriend? He's like, yeah. He's like, okay. He's like, can you still serve that to me? I was like, okay. I asked Javon, because he's the driver. I don't have a car. We were at his house, and we were already about to be tucked up going to sleep. So um, I was like, do you want to go? He's like, not really, but do you want to go? You know, because he wanted me to make my money or whatever. And I, I ain't going to lie. I was thirsty to make it because the bags weren't selling quick enough, you know? So I was like, yeah, let's go real quick. Um, so we're going, um, he's like, call me when you're, when you're on the block or five minutes away. I call him when we're right on the block, um, but at the corner. They're down here, we're at the stop sign. 
Um, I told him, he's licensed to carry, so he had his gun. I told him, I don't know these people. Javon was carrying yeah, a gun. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's licensed, you know. Um, I told him I didn't know these people, so he took the gun out and he cocked, he had it on his left side. So my window is down at this point. Um, I called him, we're still at the stop sign. I called him, I said, um, we're at the block. He said, I'm in the street. I'm I'm, I wear glasses, I didn't have them. So Javon's like, I see him, he's in the middle of the block. So um, we pull up, he goes on the right side. We're parked between um, two cars, like one car, we're right here, and then a car is like, like um, six feet in front. So Javon has foot on the brake. So this guy is standing at my window like two feet away. He's wearing a blue shirt, no mask. I could see his face clearly, you know? Um, he has a hundred in his hand, I could see it. He's like, do you have change for a hundred? I, I was like, change for a hundred. He's buying for a hundred. Yeah, I was like, change for a hundred. As soon as I said that, um, I heard, give me your stuff. I heard Javon's door open, but I didn't, I didn't look because I'm looking at the guy right here in my face. He's reaching in my, my, um, my lap. I have my phone, my purse. Um, I had a strap, a purse is like this on my lap. Um, he grabbed my phone, I'm like this. He grabbed my phone, he reached for my purse, but it, the strap broke and the purse was still on my lap because I was sitting on it. And as soon as um, he broke the strap, I heard Javon say, no, no, no. And then I, I heard a pop. And then they ran off and we rolled into the first car in front of us. It wasn't that much because we were only a little bit back. And Javon was making like wheezing sounds. And I looked at him at first to see if like he got shot in the head or something. I was I didn't know if his gun went off or somebody else's gun went off. <laughs> and I saw nothing on his face, so I got out and I opened the door and I was like this and I had blood on my hand. <laughs> he got shot right here. <laughs> I was applying pressure for like six seconds and I told him to get help across the street. There was houses. <laughs> I was begging on the first door and she didn't answer. She only came to the door after the police were there. And the guy next door, he was in the top balcony. I was screaming. He said, do you need help? And I said, call 911. They shot him. I immediately ran back to Jovan. He was putting pressure on him. He was, he was alive for like two and a half, three minutes. He passed away when the police were backing up into the block. Who contacted Jovan's mom? Um, I contacted her actually first when I got home um, on my mother's Facebook. I logged in and she didn't see it two days later because it was in her message request. So the police dropped me off and they instantly went to her. But they dropped me off around 3 a.m. And that's the exact time I was texting her when she was talking about she got a knock around 3 a.m. Why I didn't tell her first. I don't have a car. They dropped me home. You know, I was traumatized. I was crying to my mom. Like When the police are questioning you, were you ever a suspect? No, they were saying I was a witness. You were a witness. And you were cooperative with the police? Yeah. Why are you lying for? I'm not Why lying. Why are you lying? I'm not lying. Why are you lying? About what? Why are you lying? Where's the proof that Why I'm lying? lying? Babes? Where's the proof that lying? I'm lying? Why are you lying? Didn't you lie saying you didn't know me? Baby, like, your what? story changed so many times. How changed is it messages? How did it change? We told you not to come to the funeral? Yeah. When, Hennessy? Are you serious? It's on when? Facebook and my messenger. When did and I still we got tell the you not to come to the funeral, I still baby. got the messages. When? Like, stop playing. When? Your mom said, you I have a you I didn't, though. You did, though. You did, though. You don't read that? When that situation happened, it ain't nothing. So, hey, can I use your phone? Can I use your I phone? I texted your mom. Uh, let me finish talking. When? Are you when? serious? Ask her. You know who let what? my mom know that my brother passed? Detectives. I just I'm want to know, what was my son's last words? I'm sorry. It's she what what, what was it that he said? Yeah. Did he say my name? He, what was he it? He was saying, just let them take it. That's what he said. Just let them take it. I never I'm threatened sorry. you. I'm... I never told you you wasn't welcome to come Katrina, to my yes, son's funeral. No, I, I never him. threatened your daughter. I would never do that. Katrina. And from May up until now, I hadn't seen you, you ain't done it. I don't care. Morally, there is no way in the world. There is no way I'd be able to sleep at night. There was no way I could do nobody like that. That was cruel. That was heartless. If you had a heart and came to me, you a mother, I'm a mother. If you had came to me the right way, you would have been invited to the funeral. 
I told you all what A happened. black man can see what Joe meant to us. You understand me? You yeah. know what Joe, you know. He, you know. You know. I know. That was cold. That was beyond cold. Their son just got killed. And, and I'm going to give you, I'm going to say this. I understand being 22 years old and watching somebody that you cared about get shot in the chest. Super traumatic. Probably puts you in a state of shock. Who wouldn't be in a state of shock? I get that. But at some point, between May and September, you got to go over there. You got to, you, you know. Penny C came here today. She took a lie detector test. And we asked her, on the day in question, did you participate in the shooting which led to Javon's death? She answered no. Do you have any direct knowledge as to the identity of the person who shot Javon? She answered no. The results came back the same, and it came back that Hennessy told the truth. Please. I'm sorry, but what happened? Hennessy, you could have got a hug. You, 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 you we, we, we shouldn't I be here. I told you why. I'm we, we shouldn't be here. I told you all, like, I said, it was paragraphs that you said I was lying. That's exactly what happened. We shouldn't be here. I was kind of hoping My that you worked. move forward from this point oh, and not slide back into what was done. Henny, my heart, baby. My heart hurt. My son gone. He was done in my arms. I you know the lifestyle you led. I know the lifestyle he led. <laughs> I, I can't. My son gone. She's Help me never, came she, for Javon, so he I his mom could see. And this, that was a nice thing to do, so she doesn't have to wonder if you were involved anymore. Um, but I don't think she's ever going to get over the loss of her son. And... You know, making the point of if would have been there that day, her son would still be here. Now, if you keep living the life that you were living in May, you might be the next to go. I know. Or whoever you're with is next to go. Keep putting yourself in situations where you're going in sketchy neighborhoods at, after midnight with guns. Good chance you're going to get shot. That's why I stopped. You're a mother, and I hope this incident this traumatic, horrible loss of life did change your life. I hope that you'll be responsible so that you're around for your own daughter and you never put yourself in that situation again. Thank you, Good Steve. luck to you. Do you want to tell your story on the Steve Wilco Show? Visit the link in the description to get my help.